Hello, my name is Professor Rachel Julian, the Leeds Beckett University. And in this video and uh, podcast, we're talking about research ethics. Um, so the reason why we have to think about ethics of research is in the past, some fields of study have actually tried, harmed the participants or done research in a way which wasn't ethical. For example, they might have just extracted data and, and never gone back to the participants. They've shared personal information without consent or not recognised vulnerabilities or embedded inequalities uh, and sometimes even harmed people. So over the years, ethics has to a certain extent become institutionalised and formalised so that we're having to comply with regulations. And although we do have to make sure that the research we do does comply with uh, ethical approval and ethical regulations, uh, we also, and we'll be now thinking about how the ethics fits into um, our research process, how we fit the ethics in, in a participatory way. Um, even sort of like in thinking about the way in which we formulate ideas for the research question, we can integrate an ethical approach into that. So ethics itself is about the morality of sort of human behaviour, that it's about the rights and the wrongs of what we do. But there isn't a single um, sort of like ethics, uh, like whether or not you stick to the rules or taking action or sort of like where we go. But uh, there is some but understanding that ethics uh, is about, uh, in this case, involving people, uh, listening to them and making sure that they're not harmed and hopefully can even benefit from the process of being involved in research. So whilst in this uh, process of thinking about participatory research, we uh, talk about and envisage engaging with the community at the earliest stage and building that trust with them. For researchers, there's really an element that um, ethics comes before that of actually even uh, checking that you are entering and engaging with that community on an ethical basis. So for example, ensuring that you have sufficient resources and time to be able to, to stay and listen and won't have to sort of leave halfway through um, and leave the community um, without sufficient support or information. Or it might be that you uh, review the ethics in terms of how you enter into a new community if you don't already know them, um, about sort of like how you approach uh, community leaders, whether or not you act engagement, and the ways in which you present yourself and your research about being transparent and making sure that it's very clear to people that they're talking to a researcher and being asked to participate within a research topic. Uh, project, even if the actual question hasn't yet been determined. So there are ways in which research ethics um, uh, has to be a, an ongoing process. And that first beginning, if you haven't defined the research question beforehand, research ethics uh, and ethical approval uh, may not be necessary or can be difficult. So you want to remember that it's the, the way in which a researcher approaches the community is also part of ethics. Some questions you might want to ask about um, before starting participatory research and engaging with a community is you might want to ensure um, that there is benefit there is going to be some benefit of doing this research. Um, the, the research that we do is normative. It's looking for uh, leading to change, to positive change. Um, and so we want to uh, know that the research hasn't been done before. We also need to take care that um, we need to be sure that the research needs needs people. Is it possible that we can find the answer to some of the questions without involving people at all? Um, they may have already been uh, interviewed many times and le mainly leaving very stressful lives and actually to add to the burden of you talking and taking their time without benefit uh, and with possible harm is not ethical. So whilst we're absolutely saying participatory research can bring forth new information and empower people within communities, if the research doesn't need them, then we really have to say, is it ethical to uh, be participating? But in that case, we don't need them. We don't need to interview them either. 
Um, and I also think it's a, a point of ethics to think about who is doing the research. And it's like, so actually, if the researchers can ha know that they have a connection to the people, they have an entry point and they will be trusted. And also that they themselves know that they are skilled and trained well enough to be able to do the community engagement, to be able to build trusting relationships and equitable partnerships, and also trained enough in the research methods such that they can explain them and train other people and build community capacity. Let's focus first on the ethics involved in directly meeting and working with the participants. So one of the things that even before you enter into it and to working with the community, you're going to have to think about the information that you're going to collect. So by working and engaging with the community, you will necessarily um, gain personal data, um, contact data, um, information about their beliefs, their uh, addresses, something about their experience and, and their um, affiliations. So you have before you go in, you have to be thinking about um, what data you're going to collect and what that data means and how you're going to think about it. People must be able to give informed consent to be participating in it. So even if it's a community meeting, you need them to make sure that they understand why they're there and what's going on. They have to know how to contact you. So if they choose to leave the study and would like you to delete all of the anything they've told you in their personal contact details, that actually they know how to contact you um, and you have created a, a situation in which they trust you sufficiently um, for that to happen. And that may involve uh, addressing language issues um, or other communication things, especially if you're not uh, living close to the community that you're uh, work from. And the other one that you need to think about before you start working directly with people is designing the research systems so that they're accessible to everybody. So if you're asking people to sign up to attend something, you have to make sure that that information about the event uh, reaches all people and uh, including sort of marginalised and excluded populations, uh, those without telephones, those who don't look on community uh, notice boards uh, and those who are maybe not in your main networks. Um, sometimes there's a, an issue of the only people who attend meetings with researchers are those who have previously attended workshop with researchers. Um, so if you're going to think about the ethics of who's going to be involved and whose voice you're going to have within your research and, and participating with you, um, you have to think about the, the systems and structures you're setting up right from the start. If you're going to have a, a website or a public place where your research is explained, then you need to be aware of getting consent for any photographs or other data uh, which is put on there from people. And so having systems whereby you can record the consent um, and be able to document it is very important. I mentioned already about the need to... Uh, make sure that we're not wasting the time of the people that we're working with and whilst we want them to participate um, in the research that affects them we also need to make sure um, before we enter that there is a realistic chance of that happening so we need to know the issues that we're researching so if we're going to research uh, conflict. There's an essence in which we must have some understanding before we start engaging with people that that's something. So local NGOs, local community groups are often very good partners for being able to ensure uh, that there is a good understanding of the part of the researchers before going ahead. For anybody whose work involves them in programming and service delivery, these will be uh, very common questions and uh, issues to be solved within the design phase. So these are not new, it's just that we need to apply them to research when we're doing participatory research as well. We've already mentioned that if you collect personal data, you need to keep it secure. But you need to think about all the different types of data that you're going to be getting from participants. Even if, as a result of your discussion in this participatory research, you don't get direct 
data directly from participants. For example, they're able to share uh, materials that are already in the public domain if they are citizens journalists, for example, um, or you uh, gather social media data where people have already published information about themselves. Um, even then, you still have to think about because the, the meetings that you have, the minutes that you keep, all of it has to be kept secure. And there are issues around sort of like where information can be transferred, who has access to it. And we want people participating in every decision to do with the research. But the researchers themselves must be very clear that they have absolute standards on keeping people's personal data secure. Just as in any project, if data was collected and is available uh, from a different project, either from an evaluation or a programming needs analysis, then you have to ensure that everybody who is part of that, whose data you might use, are still happy for you to have consent for you to use it in this research. And it's not enough for a community to say, yeah, 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 that's fine. We, we did that before. Everybody be happy about it. You do need an individual's consent um, to do that. There are emerging ethical issues arising from using data from social media uh, because there are different views on whether social media is already in the public domain, in which case we can just uh, access it because people have already chosen to publish it themselves or whether or not they still have uh, the ownership of that data uh, and we should not be attaching it to um, any personal uh, information that we have. So you have to be clear in your research design about the decisions you've made, how you've minimised the risk and how uh, you will, you and everybody involved, so that's the whole community, are going to manage the personal da data of everybody. And we also want to make sure the researchers and also the communities, but in this case everybody, um, is kept secure. So researchers from outside of a community are usually uh, in more secure situation than participants either in terms of the accommodation where they're still staying um, or in terms of their um, either political or health risks that they face but they can still save face risks and sometimes the communities are in a better place to advise um, researchers about those risks because they understand them better and so there has to be a communication between community and researcher in order that um, they can stay safe. So it may be to do with where it is safe to go or how it is safe to um, travel um, or whether or not it's safe to travel alone or how you communicate with people about your travel. Um, it may be that the security of a particular um, building or event, so maybe if you're going to hold some event, uh, it's very important to involve the community um, to ensure that that is a suitable place. It may be that it's uh, excluding some <laughs> minority or the other, but you also want it to be secure for the researchers that they won't be harmed in any way. You have to think about the health of, of the researchers as well um, and the reputation of the researcher. So if you are uh, in designing the ethics and, and reviewing the ethics of a project, there's whilst you will have to make every effort to engage uh, with the community and ensure that they have um, equal power, you don't want to uh, risk your researchers, um, um, whoever they are, whether they're active uh, practitioner researchers, community researchers, um, or, or from your own team, you don't want to risk them in terms of their own uh, sort of future work either. Absolutely, if you do not know the situation that you are studying or the people that you're going to be participating and working with, you need to be really sure of the risks of being in an area. So you need to do a risk analysis with well-informed uh, local insight. Um, or there may be a risk of being associated with a particular group of people, either in a community or in an area. Um, for example, um, if you are studying violence um, or other uh, criminal or, or other uh, unacceptable behavior you need to be aware that of the what those people that you may also uh, 
need to be separate from them. And in the same way that we need to minimise the risk to participants and only take risks that are essential, we need to minimise the risk to researchers and researchers should only take risks that are essential. There are dilemmas in research ethics, but it's not iterative in the same way that research methods are. So not all ethical processes apply to all methods. Uh, we do need to think about the, the method of getting informed consent. Um, a particular piece of signed paper may not always uh, be appropriate. So think about ethnography or observational data. Um, but you also want to think about um, uh if people decide to keep a diary as a data collection method, your research ethics have to be updated, but you cannot uh, keep going back to the beginning. You need to make sure that everything in place for people, people participants, the data and the research is secure um, there is, is done. And that's really important.